Thank you for purchasing the Craig Adaptive Cutting System project table. Once you have the project table top and base assembled, there's a few more things you need to do to get set up and ready to cut. All of this is covered in your owner's manual and it's an easy process. But we're gonna walk you through it here just so you can see it clearly. With the table assembled, you'll need to install the guide track and guide track hinges. Then you'll use the saw to make a cut in the tabletop that'll establish your cut line that you'll use from here on out. With that done, you can install the measuring tapes and calibrate them for accurate dead-on measurements every time. Now, before you do this process, you'll want to have already set up the plunge saw and guide track, which we covered in another video. The first step in installing the track hinges is to install these hinge mounting plates. Just slide a couple of the included hex bolts into the extrusion at one end of the table and place a third bolt into the plate. Then you can slide the plate on. A tab on the mounting plate fits in a notch in the table. There's play that lets the plate move, but don't worry, that's intentional. For now, slide the mounting plate toward the center of the table and then install one of the T-knobs on the inner bolt. You don't need to tighten it completely. On the outer bolt, slip on one of these hinge support brackets, then add the T-bolt. With that done, you can install the mounting plate on the opposite end of the table. It's the same process. Install two bolts in the extrusion, place the third bolt in the mounting plate, and then slip the plate on. Then thread a T-knob on the inner bolt and the hinge support bracket and T-knob on the outer bolt. Next, you can install the track hinges on the 62-inch guide track. To do that, lay the track face down on the table with the anti-chip strip, which you've trimmed already, facing toward the center of the table. This should put the outfeed end of the track, without the cord manager, on your left. At the end of the track that's under your left hand, measure two and a half inches from the end of the track and then make a mark. Now slide one hinge onto the track. Notice that the hinge knuckles are facing up. You want the hinge to be square to the track edge, so use a square to position the hinge on your mark and then tighten it down using the included hex wrench. Now you can install the track and this one hinge on the table. First, you'll position the track with this one hinge mounted so the hinge is on the outfeed end of the table, that's the one with the wheels, and the anti-chip strip facing the edge of the table. Then attach the hinge to the mounting plate. Slip the hinge over the tabs on the plate, push it all the way up, and secure it with a washer and star knob. Now you can install the other hinge on the in-feed end of the track. Start by removing the cord manager. Then you can install the hinge. First, make sure the hinge flaps are in the up or open position and pointed toward the end of the track. This is the same orientation as the hinge at the other end. Slide the hinge into the track and then position it on the mounting plate so the hinge is raised all the way up. Tighten the star knob completely. Once again, make sure the hinges are both in the up or open position. Then you can use the hex wrench to tighten the bolt and secure this hinge to the track. Now test the hinges to make sure the track swings easily into the down position. Now you can align the track to make sure it sits at exactly 90 degrees to the holes in the table. First, swing the track into the down position and lower the hinges completely. Now install one of the tall Versa stops in the calibration hole in the tabletop. You'll probably see a gap between the stop and the anti-chip strip. Loosen the outer T-knobs on the hinge mounting plate and then slide the mounting plate over until the anti-chip strip touches the stop. Then retighten the knobs. Then you can move to the other end of the table and repeat this process. Double check that both stops are touching the track and you can remove the stops. 
Finally, reinstall the cord manager. The next step is to cut a kerf in the table. It will be aligned with the track and perpendicular to the holes in the table. To do this, place a 48 inch long piece of 3 quarter inch plywood under the track with a bit of it sticking out and swing the track down. Next you need to set the cutting depth of the saw. You want to cut into the table but not through it. So set the saw for a 1 inch deep cut. That way you'll cut a kerf about a quarter inch deep in the table. Place the saw on the track, lock in the anti-kickback, and you can make the cut. You can see here how the splinter guard rides against the wood and how the riving knife follows the saw blade. With the kerf cut, you can remove the cutoff piece and the plywood. That reveals the kerf in the table. This is the line that the saw blade will always follow. The kerf in the table shows where the edge of the saw blade will always be, so you can use the kerf to help install and calibrate the measuring rules. There are two of each type of measuring rule. One starts at 8 inches, the other at 0. One of each goes into the aluminum extrusions in the table. You can set two of the rules aside for now. The first rule with the 8 inch mark goes into the first slot. Just slide the rule in from the end. A small tab at the end locks the rule in place. The rule that starts at 0 goes in the adjacent slot. For now, just slide them in. Next you can set the distance from the saw curve to calibrate each rule. To do that, hook a tape measure in the saw kerf and extend it out. Now align the 10 inch mark on the tape measure with a 10 inch mark on the first rule. Move the rule in the table back or forward until the marks align. Then move the tape measure to the other rule, and this time align the 10 inch mark on the tape with the zero mark on the rule. The rules will stay in place once you have them set. Now both rules are calibrated with accurate measurements from the saw kerf. Repeat this process with the other two rules. Once you have the rules installed, you can install the repetitive stops in the table and double check the measurement calibration. To do that, slide one repetitive stop with the knob facing toward the track into the extrusion and align the indicator with the 10 inch mark on the rule. Then slide the other repetitive stop in place and align it with the 10 inch mark as well. Now you can install the track on the mounting plates and make a test cut in a scrap of plywood. Butt a scrap piece against the repetitive stops. Make sure the cut depth of the saw is set correctly and then make the cut. Swing the track up and remove the piece from underneath. Check its width using a tape measure. It should be exactly 10 inches wide. The last cutting guide to calibrate is the miter guide. Start by removing one of the repetitive stops. Then slide the miter guide into that same slot. You can see that the miter guide has an indicator to show angles from 0 to 60 degrees. To make sure the angles are correct, you'll want to install the two tall versa stops into two holes in the table. Adjacent holes like these are positioned at exactly 45 degrees. Slide the miter guide against the stops, lock down the knobs, and then position the indicator so it aligns exactly with the 45 degree mark. Once it's calibrated at 45 degrees, the miter guide will be accurate for every angle shown on its scale.
Using the rules built into the project table, you can make cuts up to 25 inches wide or long. For wider or longer cuts, use the 48 inch extension. It slides into the extrusion and locks in place. Just align the measurement on the extension bar with the indicator mark on the rule. So you can see just how easy it is to get your adaptive cutting system project table all set up and ready to go. Now everything's set and those measurements are locked in for accurate cutting so you're ready to go start building.